Like, well, I heard through a source that if you didn't know, I don't know if you saw this report. And it's like, dude, you bring fucking grounded facts because like these people don't have all the time in the world to like hear out your inane lefty conspiracy theories. Like, have your shit and ready to go. Like, know what you're talking about. Know how to address it. Like, you don't get to have your own interpretation of like what the stuff is when you get to the top. You don't get to be like, well, it feels like it. You know what I mean? Because you just don't even have the you don't have the political backing for that. Lone Survivor is a wild fucking movie, and, and and we're gonna start watching this video now. This is by um, a this is their only video. This is burn these books. Um, we're gonna check this out. The movies are bad. They've been bad for a long time. It's hard to find an action movie that doesn't love a little bit of extrajudicial killing. Now I will say when they found out that uh, <laughs> there's a pause. Also, this is this is this is a crazy way to try to stab somebody. I don't think that I'd actually fucking. I'd be wild to try to punch through like all of that fucking like corded muscle with like any kind of knife, and then up into like what would you do? Like this wouldn't even kill you, I don't think, unless that goes like all the way up. Uh, but yeah, like people found out that uh, you know James Summerton fell, and now like we're getting some like that's what this voice sounds like. It's even harder to find one that doesn't have some kind of relationship with the military industrial complex in one way or another. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Hollywood wants nothing more than have some old guy from the Pentagon sit around on set telling them whether their fight scenes are realistic and how much he wants to glass Iran. It's <laughs> I don't know if that's the case. <laughs> Why? Why is he old? <laughs> old people don't work at the Pentagon, man. Uh, I don't know how old you are. You might, if this guy's like in his early twenties, that might feel like old. But old old people don't work at the Pentagon. They work at fucking Congress. Uh, you kind of age out of the Pentagon. <laughs> uh, Tyler, you were were you a SEAL because you were a Marine, or were you a Marine because you were a SEAL? I was just a Marine. <laughs> I was never a Navy SEAL. I don't want to do Navy SEAL. Navy SEAL training just sounds like cock and ball torture for no fucking reason. It's not a secret. Movies like Top Gun will gladly tell you about what a pleasure it was to work with the military. <laughs> that the U.S. Air Force's public outreach program included 17 TV stations. U.S. Air Force's out outreach? God, ugh. <laughs> I've got to read fucking... I've got to read that goddamn uh, Noam Chomsky manufacturing consent book because I hear it fucking brought up way too many... To way too fucking much. 34 radio stations, 140 newspapers, 45,000 headquarters and unit news releases, 615,000 hometown news releases, six. That's fucking nothing, man. Dude, that's that's like nothing. What? 1,600 interviews and fuck it. The quote is longer than my intro. It's on page 80. You can find the book. Use Air Force revealed that it's it's public information outreach included the following. 140 newspapers, 690 copies per week. Uh, so a circulation of 690,000. Airman Magazine, monthly circulation, 125,000. 34 radio and 17 TV stations, primarily overseas. 45,000 headquarters and unit news releases. Why are you... <laughs> 615,000 hometown news releases. 6,600 interviews with news media, 3,200 news conferences, 500 news media orientation flights. Okay, okay, so that's like 500 like ride-alongs. 50 meetings with editorial boards, 11,000 speeches. That's like no penetration, buddy. You know how many fucking, like, when is this, when was this supposed to take place? Like, you gotta, yeah, bro, 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 I know it's your first, I know it's your first rodeo. It's your first rodeo, son. Welcome to the internet. Um, when, when, when was this? <laughs> what was the timeline? Because if this was like, if this was less than like a year, uh, that's not like that much. Do you know how many fucking newspapers were in America? Like last year? It, it was a lot. You know what I mean? Even compared to these numbers. If this is from like the 90s or something, well, I don't know when the fuck no Noam Chomsky could still move his fingers enough to type. But if this is from like the 60s or 70s, this is like a non-penetration 
at all, like whatsoever. Like you're just talking about advertisement. Like people aren't, it's not like advertising and propaganda are two different things. All right. You're like, I know it's like a little kid brain. If somebody says they like something you don't like, that's propaganda, but this is, it's also the air force, man. Like who gives a fuck? All the insidious fucking Air Force. Oh, did you know that in 1972, fuck Richard Nixon? Oh, shut up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Look, we're free on Google. Just pull it up. The point is, they do a lot, and it's not a new thing. Movies can be very easily used for political ends. Big bang to bang. Wait, were you actually? Movies can be very easily used Was this used incidental? For it's just because you took this, vi this footage from somebody else? Okay, you did. Are you? Okay, you got, he's got he's got like a little lower okay, third. The quote is longer there. than my intro. It's on page eighty. You can find the book for free on Google. Just pull it up. The point is, they do a lot, and it's not a new thing. Survivor, Movies can be very easily used for political ends. Okay, bang, bang, you should do bang. that for you. You need to do that for your fucking memes too, if you're gonna keep it going. They're attacked by commie Nazis. My eyes popped out of my head and steam came out of my ears when I found out that the movie was positively received by audiences and critics alike and it was the highest grossing post 9-11 war movie at the time. I knew deep in my loins this was, was it? the most evil movie I'd ever- Is that actually true? Also, how did you find that out? That seems like something you, you would have had to have like looked up intentionally or someone told you. But like I thought, I thought Zero Dark Thirty was the biggest war movie post 9-11. Was that before or after this? Dude, okay, by the way, if you're going to use all this footage, you got to fucking credit these people. Where is it? Is it down there? What the hell? Your, your credits, is that, is there a credit? I can't fucking, I can't fucking see it. What the fuck? It's, uh, your credits, bro, your fucking credits are underneath the, like, entirety of this bar. Can you see that? If you watch back, you got to put your credits somewhere where somebody can fucking see it. But at least you did credit it, I guess. Marcus Luttrell was sent into the Hindu Kush mountains of Afghanistan for Operation Red Wing. I really appreciate going on a sneaking mission and you're just like fucking hanging out in your BDUs on the fucking side of a hill. Oh, man. That's the, that's the beginning. That's the beginning of the, because I just remember this shit too, is they just look like ass the entire time. The trial notes that they couldn't be seen from below. This shit just, this shit is just so fucking crazy that these guys are just up here and like, just the weirdest kit. I like, I don't know who, who they're like, I don't know who did the, uh, you know what I mean? Um. Who did the, the the military oversight? But I remember that from this movie, especially is like they're the, the way that they're kitted up for this mission is fucking crazy. Because I mean, if you just see, this guy's got fucking chocolate chip cami top, and they're in the fucking woods, so like you're just a weird that's a that's a weird color to be. And they haven't done any sort of like uh, they haven't done any sort of obfuscation. Like so, you would at least try to like maybe cover some of your shit up in like cami netting or some cloth or something, so you just don't look like a guy with a gun in the woods. <laughs> like these dudes aren't fucking blended in at all. Appeared to suggest they were not fans of the Americans either, and this is where things get really fucking weird. Same reason main character the team must still come to a consensus helmets, on yeah. what to do with the farmers. The author correctly identifies the three of them as unarmed civilians, according to the Geneva Convention, but he then claims that. The strict, correct military decision would still be to kill them without further discussion, because we could not know their intentions. How could we know if they were affiliated with a Taliban militia group? He says that although these men- Bro, you gotta- If you're gonna try to- If you're gonna try to- You gotta use your diaphragm. You, you wanna try to do that, boy? You gotta go down here. Cause when you're trying to do like this, you just- You sound fucking- a fucking terrible voice. And showed no aggression, they also didn't offer or want a hand of friendship. Which, to be clear, is not something covered in the Geneva Convention. I know I said I would what, tell them. What was that? Which, to be clear, is not. Jim Conventions of August, 12 August 1949. But, I, but have you? But my friend, those aren't the entirety of the Geneva Conventions. You must go all the way back to 18 fucking 45 or some shit. <laughs> fucking there's, oh, the new ones don't cover the stuff in the old ones. They're additional conventions. And there's also the Hague Conventions. So keep that shit in mind. I still don't know if this is the case, but. Murphy said that if they killed him, someone would find the bodies not long after, partially because of the massive goat herd, 
partially because they wouldn't return home to their family. Oh, yeah. And then we get to see the scene. Dude, they're, they're going to let this kid go, and he is going to parkour down this mountain like you have never fucking seen someone move in your life. This motherfucker he then goes. says that when the Taliban inevitably find their bodies, they would make this a massive issue in the Afghan media. Oh, come, I guess I can't show it. I can't show it because it'll probably it'll it, it's just it's just gonna fuck with goddamn content ID too much. The kid that was glaring at him from the tree like this, the most evil little brown kid ever. You know what I mean? If I could obviously like try to Mark Wahlberg's like, can we get one? Just he just looks looks like a, a little bit more brown. Can we just get one that's like he's just gotta have darker eyes. He just has to. You know what I mean? <laughs> that kid. They let them go, and that kid goes down, and he is literally jumping down like 20-foot outcroppings, like, whoosh, doing like jumping rolls in slow motion. Watch, blatch, blatch, all the way to the bottom. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> to the point where you should keep it in here, because the whole point of that's for like a uh, fucking Midwestern white people, like, he should have shot him. <laughs> You'd make their radio work, which it hadn't for much of the mission. After being hit multiple times, Mike Murphy walked into the open to call headquarters on his cell phone and request reinforcements. After making the call, Marcus was unable to reach him and he was killed by the Taliban. At this point- It's not, it's not a cell phone, it's a sat phone. I, I don't know, it, if he said cell phone, that's wild. I, that might be the case, I don't think it's the case. Sat phone is what that is, it's a satellite phone. They responded by packing a helo to support the team, which was immediately shot down by the Taliban, killing everyone aboard, which Marcus calls the... So that actually did happen, if I remember correctly, which is just like a, an absolute fucking freak shot. Um, and I think that was one of the biggest um, single casualty incidents in Afghanistan, in the I think still to this day, to the entirety of the operation. So like that was the largest single... like. Um, loss of life incident suffered by our forces in the entirety of the Afghan. Like that was like a day, you know what I mean? Worst special ops catastrophe ever. At this point, Marcus is severely injured and dehydrated, wandering around the mountain looking for water. He believes he's being followed multiple times, but is able to keep them off his tail because he keeps accidentally falling off of cliffs. <laughs> After briefly considering killing It happened so many times. It happened so the part before the part before uh where like that guy was like dying like that that is most of the big chunk of the beginning of the movie right like or the entire that's like like the first three quarters of the movie if i remember correctly or like half two thirds first two thirds of the movie is all that and they do it a bunch if you saw the one little scene the guy went Bleh! down dude they are falling off the side of fucking mountains in this movie the whole time it's like you you get to a point where like how are we not on the ground yet <laughs> Killing some civilians to steal their water. Marcus they is use a stinger or an R they used an RPG. Um, by a group of locals who, after missile. a tense introduction, express to Marcus that they are not Taliban. It's tragic, it's apolitical, war is hell, case closed. That is, if you actually believe this version of events. Which you. Okay, so we're going to get into something that I will stand by 100%. Never believe a fucking Navy SEAL. Just if they tell you snow is white, they're lying. Is the quote I heard from someone. Those motherfuckers have uh, all, every single Navy SEAL has individually saved democracy 20, 30 times on their own. They are the most story filled individuals ever. No Navy SEAL has ever had like a fucking normal day. <laughs> They just can't. They can't just like. There's not a single Navy SEAL who like became a SEAL and then like just got on a fucking helicopter six times, never really did much, and then like got out after like six to ten years. Not a single fucking one. Every fucking Navy SEAL has literally rode one rocket ship into the stratosphere before halo diving into like a fucking enemy compound and like I don't know maybe fucking like half of their wives before blowing the thing up. And, and riding a fucking bald eagle back to America. They are insane. I know there's probably a bunch of normal Navy SEALs. If one of you guys watch this, it's fine. But you know it's on your guys. Y'all motherfuckers can't tell your friends to just write one normal fucking book. It's always got to be the most over-the-top shit. 200 Taliban. 
<laughs> I think he got fucking hit by like they, they just probably got ambushed by like a fucking normal amount. I don't know how you even get that count and fucking got hit by a grenade and he had a concussion and fucking wandered down the hill. <laughs> it's probably what fucking happened. Oh my god. You shouldn't. I mean Jesse Ventura has been dishonest with me. Je- Jesse Ventura is always honest when he's saying almost every single other famous Navy SEAL has been a fucking liar. <laughs> I don't, I just don't believe any of them. Like, I, here's the, and I don't feel like I have to either. Cause like, it's just funnier to not believe them and just say like, you guys went through cock and ball torture as the fucking buds is just fucking like literal, just like hardcore German nut torture. And y'all feel fucking like, you know. Y'all feel a little bit let down by that, so you just make up stories. Like, if you just tell me that, like, oh, yeah, th- like, but it's, like, a top-secret mission, I'm just going to say I don't believe you. <laughs> I just don't believe you. Because, like, the one time you guys all killed fucking Osama bin Laden, you told everybody. So, like, why, I, like how the fuck are you not... The, the time... The, the fucking... Do you guys remember? The, when they killed bin Laden, the fucking team that was in there immediately broke down and started arguing with each other over and over and over again about who specifically shot bin laden for like who was there like they're fucking insane rambo was a navy seal documentary don't you know i think rambo was uh green beret anyway i don't think rambo was a navy seal did you just read read that the wrong way and Shaw could not have killed 20 Marines in the week before the operation because the U.S. only lost two soldiers in the entire country in that time. Dipshit, read the fucking part that you highlighted, you fucking asshole. Up to that point, only five Marines had died in combat. He's talking about Marines, not soldiers. Fuck! (laughs) Two soldiers in the entire... See, AI casualties are in the U.S. did not use 20 Marines in Operation Red Wings. Only two U.S. soldiers or Marines died in Kanar province in 2005 before Operation Red Wings. In the week before Operation Red Wings, only two soldiers died in the entire country. Up to that point, only five Marines had died in combat since the war started. You gotta say that. You should just read that whole fucking thing out, man. Our country in that time. And although Shah had ties to Al-Qaeda, his association with bin Laden was an outright fabrication. Although Shah had ties to Al-Qaeda... His association. I don't trust anyone that fucking pulls these up and down this fast. I read the article in the Washington Post with great interest and was stunned by the omission of Marine Corps involvement, the misstatement of the name of the operation, the exaggerated enemy numbers, the outright fabrication that U.S. intelligence officials believed Ahmad Shah was close to Osama bin Laden, and among other items. <laughs> I don't know why I'm taking this guy for serious. Um, I can't remember. Was, was fucking... Oh, okay, 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 that's how this works. It gets confusing. So, yeah, Bin Laden founded Al-Qaeda in 18, 1988 um, after Soviet forces were, were defeated and withdrew from Al- Afghanistan. Bin Laden founded an organization called Al-Qaeda, or the base, to continue the cause of jihad, holy war, through violence and aggression. And that was to basically get all of the other people out. Uh, all of the other non-Arab, or non-fucking non-Muslim people out of uh, Muslim countries. A mudshot, a once unknown local Taliban aspirant, gained instant global fame and saw his ranks, finances, and armaments, including those taken from the SEALs, burgeon, enabling him to renew his attacks with greater intensity and ferocity. Taliban aspirant. Number two. As Luttrell tells it, the most pivotal scene in our story occurs when the SEALs capture the goat herders and need to make a decision on what is to be done with them. Latrell claims that his Christian soul compelled him to let the men go, a decision he believes cost his friends their lives and would haunt him for years to come. I'm going to say that that never, all of that never happened, would be my guess. Um, what would that be? SOP. Okay, so if you get, if you get, it depends on exactly what's going on. But like, your, your missions have certain things you're supposed to do, okay? So if like your mission is about to get fucking like, is your, if your mission is to go look at something and not be noticed, the second you can't look at it anymore or you get noticed, the mission's a flub, right? Unless you have like some sort of secondary thing and so you need to leave. So if two people stumble on you and you're up in the hills, unless you're like on some sort of, I don't know how deep they were. And I mean, it's Afghanistan. So it, it's not like it's fucking hard to get helicopters in and out, especially if you haven't been sighted. If you catch two guys and you have a, 
what i think four navy seals total so right you got a seal team of four and you can you have restraints you know what i mean you can just like take them with you <laughs> you can just abduct them i know it's not like the best thing to do probably but like um i know i know that that's happened while we were in country basically uh it wasn't with my guys specifically but basically like dudes showed up at the wrong place at the wrong time where it was like yeah you could you could shoot them if you wanted like technically speaking but everyone's like I'm, like don't do that if you don't have to because it's the stupidest thing to do <laughs> just start lighting people up uh just because like you can that's like the dumbest fucking dumbest fucking move to make so um you just go and like arrest them for a second like hey we're gonna like you know detain you and then you take them out of the area and then you just let them go again <laughs> Which I thought of the first time I saw this, I would be like, I'm not going to like let you go because that's too dangerous, but I am just going to like put some handcuffs on you and just be like, Hey guys, like, look, we're going to get into a fucking firefight with these guys. If you go and talk to them, we don't want to shoot you. You want to be chill and just like, we're going to abduct you temporarily. I mean, I know that's still like not the best thing ever, but I don't give a fuck as far as the solutions of me getting shot or you getting shot, you walking with us. For like three miles, you know what I mean? Until we can get fucking like the air comes to get us and then we'll just let you go while we're getting on the helicopter. It's like, you could just do that. Um, I don't know why their exfil was like so fucking far away. I don't know anything about the military or the, the, the operations. I would have to read the book. But I got to say, the dude talking about his Christian soul, I'm like I'm 99% sure he just made some of this shit up because it's kind of fucking embarrassing to get like smoked by a goat herder. Because you're like, you're a Navy SEAL. So like, if you get fucking cracked by some fucking nobody up in the woods, it's like, oh, you were supposed to be super cool. But then you fucking took like the fattest fucking L. That sucks. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. He has the Metal Gear Solid strategy. Yeah. Put him in a locker. Bro, you got to stop with the voices. Please, Jesus fucking Christ. I, I... What, let me hear this at fucking normal speed. In my 14 years of Navy experience, I've never seen or heard of anything like that. No, I <laughs> you can't. You gotta stop with that, man. You gotta you just don't ever. That's not for you. You can just read it in your normal voice. Just don't. don't that's not for you. Don't do that anymore. <laughs> the easy response to this story is that Latrell didn't have the heart to tell Murphy's family that their son was open to the idea of committing a war crime. But it doesn't seem like he expressed it anywhere before his book was The wild part is, is his his buddy that's dead was like, he's like, nah, he really wanted to kill him. Like, could you imagine being that guy's family? And like, you see your son <laughs> being portrayed by the guy, that one like scruffy piece of shit dude who plays villains. And he's like, oh, we should just kill him. <laughs> you gotta take his word for it, man. I re-interviewed the Marines who had intimate knowledge of Luttrell's after-action report. All those I re-interviewed- Because I fucking knew it, I told you. Because the Marines probably picked- the Marines probably picked him up. Because <laughs> it's just- it's just one of the jobs that the fucking Marines do. It's QRF and fucking recall, or, or recovery. Equally likely that this version of events- uh, not, Like, without reservation, by the way, you know how, like, re like Rainbow Six always feels fucking defender-sided? It's because- it is like just real life. Just it is <laughs> defender sided like crazy, man. It's just more accurate than what we got in the book. <laughs> Number three. What how civilians tend to forget the, the story other that guys are human with a brain the roughly the same intellect as you. Aspect of team warfare. Oh yeah. The goat it's a, it's, it's just the a shadow diversity. Like I would move this way. Latrell states that had but they not guns. followed the rules of engagement, that his friends would still be alive today. <laughs> so they offered a compromise. They would fly helicopters over the region for a few days so that the actual insert wouldn't seem so out of the ordinary. On the day itself, they would stage multiple false inserts as well to throw the locals off their scent. <laughs> Damn seals. <laughs> this is so worth it for me. I didn't know any of this extra details. Fucking of course the Marines are like... What? Let's walk. <laughs> You're gonna do an observation mission and you're gonna have you're gonna fly in on a helicopter. <laughs> it's fucking amazing, dude.
Luttrell says that he and the team were ultimately able to hide the rope, but he neglects to mention how fucking huge this thing was. When tightly coiled, it would be around the size of three suitcases stacked on top of each other, making it difficult to hide and Yeah, so Fast Rope is big, by the way. You guys know about Fast Rope. Fast Rope is fucking huge. It's like this gigantic, thick rope that you slide down. The other reason that you cut it off is because it can get caught, and it's attached to the fucking aircraft. It, it's attached to it, and it's insanely thick. Like, you can fuck... It's supposed to support multiple fully armored human beings sliding down the cocksucking thing at once. You just say, lay it on your lap, right? Floom, slide. If you've never gone down a fast rope, it's a lot of fun. Exploding knees. Um, they cut them off, or they detach them and shit like that, so that they don't get caught on stuff. Um... That's one of the things. And if they like, if there's any risk of it too, uh, because it's also, because it's so big, you have to haul it up. Heavy as shit. You know what I mean? So you got to pull the fucking rope back in. Um, I, yeah, I think you, you, you cut them most of the time, right? Uh, I think they might even dislocate. I, I can't remember. I never had to fuck with fast rope other than like basic. Um, that wasn't in basic training, was it? Was training ropes? Or was that just, was that, uh, was that fucking um, SOI? I can't remember. I just had to do basic ropes training and it was super, super fucking easy. Uh, that was the day you got to see people freak the fuck out. Um, if you guys don't know, like there's like, what is it called? Static hang. Um, there's, there's two. There's one where you go down and you bounce, repel. Bup, 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 bup. And then there's the other one where you fucking free hang, repel. Like that. You don't do that one, even though it has a smaller rope. You tend not to do that one out of helicopters very often because it requires you to have an entire fucking harness on because you have to use the harness to slow yourself down as opposed to the, ha the fast rope, which you can slide down and then go, right? But whether it was a giant rope or these guys dicking around the mountains for hours, it seems as though the seals had been found out Unironically, I would have brought the rope with me and just told any Afghan that I ran into, like, hey, be chill. I'll give you this gigantic, free, very expensive rope. And they'd be like, fuck off. I can have that. A hundred foot of rope, dude. I can unweave that into a normal size rope. It's like fucking 400 yards long. Like, yeah, 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 buddy. That's all for you. <laughs> Before they came across the goat herders, Lieutenant Long reported receiving word from the SEALs late in the morning of the 28th the team had been soft compromised by the goat herders. Ed Derrick writes that, Then after what seemed along like just a few minutes from the soft compromise call, the next- So like, here's the other thing, are these guys, this is crazy because this doesn't sound like a fucking, like actual, like, this doesn't sound like any sort of normal recon mission. Like this sounds foobar off the fucking, off the, off rip. Because like, I have friends who were fucking snipers, right? It was like I play fucking video games with. Also, just like me, does not give a fuck. Yeah, I was literally sni scout sniper recon. Fucking, he did all the cool shit. He's like, it's fucking lame and it's fucking gay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> fucking crawling around and stuff. And they have to crawl. They crawl when they're trying to sneak up because you got to. You know, you know that you guys remember Metal Gear Solid 4? This. It's that shit, you know what I mean, for miles, and you're covered in stuff. So, like, these guys are just guaranteed going to get fucking caught because it's just easy to see people walking around in the fucking fields. Oh, yeah, that moment all the time, man. Walking around at night sucks, too. I've fallen in so much shit. Except the recon Literally at times. Echoed through the room. Once Marcus and his team were found by the Taliban, I'll the tell you what, have you believe that even just finding that out, my earlier fucking, my earlier solution is just 100% accurate. Is it not? You should just fucking just clap them up and fucking walk back to the exfil. If you're fucking compromised, just, you're done. This thing is a soft compromise in an unfriendly nation. They're going to fucking tell on you. Like, you're trying to go look at their neighbors. They're not going to be fucking cool with you. Do you know what I'm saying? Started picking bad guys off one by one. Isn't that what happened with Black Hawk Down? It was just a very, very badly prepared op, as I recall, yeah. In the book, he says that the force was probably closer to the 200 than the 80 minimum that they had been advised. In probably gets real old than 20 after feet of came out, Yeah, you haven't lived. You haven't lived until you've low crawled. <laughs> you don't even know like, there's a different types. High crawl, low crawl, belly crawl. Patrick Kinzer, a Marine infantry officer who helped plan the operation, called the trial's claims exaggerated nonsense, saying that there weren't 35 base, enemy fighters in all of- Based fucking LT Kinzer, bro. <laughs> Based fucking 
LT. Oh, he's probably working with them. He's probably a fucking captain or a major. Base fucking Captain Kinzer, bro. What a what a fuck what a tremendous fuck what based fuck, dude. Oh my god. I do how about it? How about it, dude? Am I is it I'm not special. I'm any other Marine. <laughs> Tyler, you're uniquely a dickhead. Then you see these guys, there's just other Marines talking about this dude supposed to be like, he's a fucking war hero. Like, he's a fucking lion piece of shit. This fucking moron. <laughs> talk about like, what, there's 500 people down there? Fuck that dumbass. <laughs> That's fucking funny as shit. Oh, he read that after. I've been at the location where he was ambushed multiple times. I've had Marines wounded there. I've been in enough firefights to know that when shit hits the fan, it's hard to know how many people are shooting at you. But there weren't 35 enemy enemy fighters in all of Korangal Valley that day. Oh, they're in Korangal? I don't get it. But it would be, like, here's the other thing, is it's hard to get a fucking count. I don't know why you would think it, but also, like, sometimes, especially, like, in Afghanistan, because shit's so fucking mountainous, like, you can't get that many people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, going after you, like, of or Korangal Valley that day. Like, 200 people is a crazy amount. Like, 80 people is a large amount. That's, like, I just think about it like this, like, and rep, that's, like, two like whatever two to four classrooms of of fighters right you know like if you're thinking about it like that so like do multiple squads of people just all together like oh, just attacking these random people like how did you even fucking organize that like it would be the biggest that's one of the biggest assault forces that they have going like in the taliban like at the moment you know what i mean for these According four guys at derek intelligence reports pegged the number of enemy combatants around eight to ten Andrew McManus, a former Marine colonel who helped draw up the mission Another was Marine. On scene during the search and recovery effort for the Dead Seals, says there were no reports of any enemy casualties. So to summarize the bullshit so far, he was wrong about the importance of the mission, he was wrong about how the story's pivotal conversation shook out, he was wrong about why he was attacked, he was wrong about how many people- Bro, you don't even have to say wrong, you can just say lied. You just say lied at this him, point. And he was wrong about how the fight played out. How do you put this on the cover of your book? multiple editions how do you like didn't anyone think why wouldn't you fuck it it doesn't matter because as i'll tell you why that's a good old fashioned that's a good old fashioned uh reference smudge just if you misspell it a little bit it's harder to look up the actual one <laughs> but i actually think that this book and its purposes oh no think, he's on fucking rogan damn it look he, mu he mutated into a th the longer he stayed out the more thummy he got They are very specific. We may not open fire until we are fired upon or have positively identified our. Bro, also please back up from your you're popping your popping your bees. Just get a fucking get a get a, get a, get a fucking get a pop filter. Enemy and have proof of his intentions. He thinks this is all very gallant, but he immediately counters these rules by saying, "But what if we'd been fired upon in the previous days of patrol and our very this nearly dude's fucking been through it? I don't know who the fuck this guy is. I love these fucking hats. I would start wearing one of these." Exhausted and maybe slightly scared. I can say from first hand experience that those rules of engagement cost the lives of three of the finest US Navy SEALs who have ever served. They would not have died right then, and in my view, would almost certainly have been alive today. It's a pretty bold claim. Could just put the whole. Why do you put some quotes up? And then not read the whole quote. And then you had another quote that you read the whole quote, but then it wasn't all on the screen. And why, as discussed, why you almost these? certainly a lie. If we did shoot a couple of them, they would be on their cell phones with the speed of 10,000 gigabytes, direct to the Arab television station Al Jazeera. And that the media in the States would crucify school. us. Was there ever a greater uproar than the one that broke out over Al Ghraib? And look. I can sympathize to some extent. Have I told you guys I've been to Abu Ghraib? I gotta talk about that again sometime. That's actually where I got fucking, that's actually where I got gassed out by a fucking goddamn smoke grenade. I think it was like 15 fucking smoke grenades. It was well after that shit happened when I was high school and there was no one left in there anymore. Like the whole prison got fucking emptied out and we were part of the changeover committee with the uh, committee. I don't know how to even say it, but like, I don't know. There was... 20 marines maybe total including our officers on the base and we changed it over to the iraqi army and gave it to them but i've been to abu Ghraib. it is the creepiest it's the creepiest fucking place on earth creepiest 
with the idea that in the fog of war, soldiers can at times be put in an ambiguous situation where they might need to make split-second decisions that could ultimately lead ambiguous. to good, innocent people being killed. Oh, God. I haven't, I've never seen a picture of these. I want to show you guys something. This is what's going to kill me. Need to make split -second I'm old. This is what's going to actually have killed me from the Iraq War. Good that right there. Anyone know what that little... Anyone knows what this is? I'll give you a dollar. Here's another one. Does anybody know what this fucking thing is? This might as well be me, dude. This looks like this actually kind of... This is... On my last deployment, this is kind of what Al-Assad area looks like. This is a chameleon. Um, these little... These little domes. Uh, they might have a different name for it. But this little fucker right here um, obliterates all of the signals that, like, exist in the area. It is just putting out every kind of, like, radiation that we transmit signals on at once so that it can block all of it we turn these things on so but it only has like a it has a limited range like this chameleon right here only covers like this much because it's it's like high intensity but it, it bleeds out so that you can still use all of your stuff and your comms equipment basically there's like a fucking hole in this that like it only it stops on little start bits and then you put like your 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 changing signal and so it's bouncing around in there um so that it can go past it and you can actually talk and if you fuck it up or you're like you you don't have your clock set right basically it won't fucking work but i was a turret gunner that's what this guy's in right now this video is a dude in a turret gun this is this is some fucking this is some fucking lance cooley like me up here i know this 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 is the turret with the fucking God abu Ghraib was fucking wild it was the wildest part of my first deployment and my first deployment's the first time I ever got fucking and the last time I ever got fucking mortared. <laughs> I was there for two weeks. That's it. Two weeks. There was no prisoners. There was no anyone except for Iraqi army people. And we were in the middle of it. I cannot, I will get, that's a stun lock beyond a stun lock. That's a whole thing. Um, was I afraid of these guys? No. Was I afraid of the possible buddies in the Taliban? No. Was I afraid of the liberal media back in the USA? Yes. Okay, I'm just telling you right now, this guy got fucking... Somebody, somebody fucking ghost wrote this for him or with him because to make him... Like, this is just an old... This is old Rittenhouse shit. Same deal. You know what I mean? We just need to make you into a little... You're going to be a little propaganda guy for something because nobody's thinking about the fucking liberal media back home. The statement is, and unironically, like, I'll just share this with you. Um, the, the routine thing is to say, like, it's better to be fucking, uh, better to be tried by 12 than carried by six. Like, it's not like a thing that you have like a whole conversation with people about. Like if, if it's like you're freaked the fuck out and you've got to shoot someone, you just do it. And then you fucking take the consequences on the chin, like a fucking adult, which I lived by that. And I never had to do anything with it. So I'm fine. Like I shot a guy's engine block basically one time. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I fucking think I fucking hit anybody, as far as I'm concerned. Um, but like, that's the whole thing. Like that, that's like a really common talking point. No one's ever just like, man, the fucking the liberal. Like, I'm, <laughs> what if they get talk about me on the news? <laughs> what the fuck? I've never heard that concern. Um, I never heard that concern while we were over there. We had like embedded journalists and shit twice on my first deployment. And I, we, ne I never heard a fucking thing about from like anyone, like, like maybe like some people are like, I hope they fucking get the story right. Kind of thing. But no one's just like, don't know if I'll be able to kill anybody. Cause I, I don't know how I'm going to fucking appear in the liberal news media. <laughs> I guess it's cause we were all like 19 to 22 in general. I don't know. Maybe like older people <laughs> that concerned, but we were just like, I hope I don't fucking die. I saw a guy die the other day. I don't want to die too. <laughs> I would rather, I hope I never have to learn how to kick a fucking soccer ball with a fake leg. That's, like, that's really your big concern. Like, I'll fucking shoot anybody if they fucking try to fuck with me. That's pretty much it. Not like I'm going to have some fucking deliberate, like, pray to God about, like, fucking Isaac coming down. You know, do, do I have to fucking slay Isaac up on this fucking hill? Is that who it is, I think? You know, uh, angelic fucking intervention. Now it's just like... I mean, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Like, I got a fucking job to do, and I just want to go home. <laughs> Rules that are unworkable, because half the time, no one knows who the goddamned enemy is. 
This is a take that the average person would be repulsed by. That's why they needed to craft a story in which the only way to save our brave hero What? Average person would be because half This kind of terrorist and surgical warfare, no, I can't, I, it's, I'm sorry, I was like zoned out, I was just <laughs> thinking about Iraq. In this kind of terrorist and surgical warfare, no one can tell who's a civilian and who's not, so what's the point of framing rules that cannot be comprehensively carried out by anyone? Rules that are unworkable because half the time no one knows who the goddamn enemy is. You would have to point me to one of them. I mean, we kind of like said that to each other. Like that was like a, a thing, but we were like also like all of them kind of made sense. Like it was like a little frustrating, but also like it was pretty well known that if you had to clip somebody, like more than likely command would be on your side if you weren't a fucking psycho. Like if you just like lived normal, you know what I mean? And you weren't like walking around like a gibbering psychopath, like one guy we had you know, that fucking talked to his gun and eventually murdered somebody and had to go to the fucking jail for a fucking long time. Um, if you're not like that and like you actually you were like fucking I had to do it like more than likely people are going to be on your side like it's the American military so I, I, I can't imagine anybody that was actually like felt so restricted by the ROEs that they didn't fucking shoot at somebody the ROEs are pretty fucking soft too like most of them are about v at least in my area you know I guess this is Afghanistan but like it has to be even softer then, because, like, I was in an area where it's fucking hairy as shit all the time, because I lived basically, like, the, the best way to describe it is I lived in an area that would normally have, like, an Applebee's and a TGI Friday. <laughs> That's where we were. We were, all, like, on a, one of those exits, you know what I mean? That's, like, to a, a random weird town. Like, I was on that overpass bridge, if it makes any sense. There should have been McDonald's on the corner, basically, and there kind of was. I think it was the banana stand that kept getting burned down. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and so like we, I saw thousands of people and tens of thousands. I'm not even shitting. You. It was a four lane highway, tens of thousands, tens of thousands of cars every day loaded up with the craziest shit. These gigantic red water jug things. The fucking Iraqi farmers would stack onto the back of like Ford F-150 style cars. They weren't like actually that they're. Opals? No, Opal is, I think, a black sedan. This is what my brain says an Opal is. I can't remember. But I think they're the Toyotas that never die. Stack so fucking high, the wind would blow, and you would see the car fucking going up on one or two wheels. The guy's fucking, like, back and forth. And, like, if, if you were so fucking froggy, if you were as froggy as this fucking seal, like, you would have fucking, you would have probably smoked like, a lot of people being nervous up there. Because we would have people just come by, and they'd be like, mad at us like fuck i hope you'll die you know what i mean like fuck you like all right like fuck you too bud um <clears throat> and it is what it is you know but like fucking I, I never really felt like and i don't think anybody else ever was talking about like dude the roes are gonna get us fucking killed the roes are gonna get us killed like it was they were super basic it was just like don't shoot anyone before you're real sure is basically what it boils down to rules of engagement is what an roe means don't shoot anyone unless you're like real sure. And like, but like, you know, if you don't feel safe, but like, make sure you feel like reasonable, you know, um, have like, I think they were basically, like, it was, it was all the stuff that's like kind of like justified. Like, yeah. All right. Like if the guy has a gun and, um, he points it at you, then that's probably okay. To, like, yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Um, if somebody like, but there's no rule against like preparatory action generally, not until I was on my second deployment and the fucking Sunni awakening or whatever it was happened. Um, cause you can do, you can point your gun at people and be like, fuck off, like go away. Like you can still do that. You can talk to them. You can tell them like, fuck off. You know what I mean? Like, like, like I'll fucking kill you. Get the fuck away from me. Hiff, hiff, stop, go away. Fuck off. Like leave. And people be like, ah, oh, what the fuck? Like, I gotta go this way. And like, shut, get the fuck out of here before I fucking shoot you. Like, I will fucking shoot you. Go away. I'm like, all right, fine. Fuck you. Like, yeah, yeah, fuck you. I'm working here. Come on, get out of there. <laughs> you know? I don't even think I did that. Uh, <laughs> that would probably been a, that would have been a pretty crazy day. That's probably a fucking story I heard from somebody. Um, most of the time we went on patrols. I went on patrols in areas like what this guy sounds like, uh, when we finally started patrolling on the second half of my first deployment. I mean, I've been on patrols in Ramadi, but it was like chill then. So fuck me. But like, I, we went on foot patrols in Sacloa and outside and it's just like 
fields and fields and fields and fields and like weird scrawny fucking Iraqi cows and aqueducts and shit. And like, like basically like walking around like, dude, if somebody wants me dead, I'm fucking cooked, man. I just got to look like I'm fucking less important than the rest of you. <laughs> There's nothing I can do. There's nothing I can do. If somebody wants to set up in this field over here and shoot me in the neck from 200 meters away, like that's just it for me. I'm fucked. Like I just hope he's a bad shot or he wants to shoot one of you idiots first because I'm fucking cooked. And that's pretty much it. But Tyler, what if it's late at night and they're wearing a ski mask and carrying a bag of Skittles? Dude, everyone's fucking over there is wearing fucking like masks and shit. It, it's That's the other thing. Like... They fucking walking around wearing fucking masks and stuff all the goddamn time. They got their little, you know, the kafia. No, I can't remember the goddamn name of it. But they got their little fucking headband the that they get from the Hodge green one, black one, red one. And you know, sometimes it'll be like chill, but like if it's a sandstorm, they'll fucking you know wrap their faces up. And you have sandstorms all the time. Guys will be walking around with fucking like like this much and maybe even goggles. Like you can't see anybody fucking whatever like we're just gonna shoot somebody because you can't see their face like wait watch their hands anyway like don't be watching people's faces trying to figure out what they're gonna do also like why would i even care if they're wearing a mask like, they fucking look like everybody else around here it's like you're just one random iraqi dude with the same fucking mustache beard combo and you look like all of the rest of the dudes from 100 meters that i've seen he's it's good wait like oh yeah can you pick him out of a lineup um he's a dude He's 5'5", five, five, dark brownish skin, big fucking mustache, kind of looks a little angry, hat, wearing a white fucking dish dash. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, every time. like uh, There he goes. Like, you don't even have to fucking wear a mask to shoot at me, and I won't know who the fuck you are. You're like, I, you're, in, you're not even in squinting distance. It's fucking just a dude over here. A lady shot at you. What is she wearing? She is wearing a fucking burqa. That, okay. Bye. <laughs> they don't have it quite as bad as Jews during the Holocaust, but it's close enough that the author thought to make the comparison. What? The locals didn't love us either, as if they were sick to death of having the American military around them. <sighs> yeah. In fact, there were districts in Manama known as black flag areas to signify Americans not welcome. I guess it wasn't quite as vicious as Judenverboten was in Hitler's Germany, but there were undercurrents of hatred all over the Arab world. That's a wild point to make. The black flag is, by the way, um, over there while we were scrapping. The black, black flags are the flags of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda's flag is a black flag. So if you see black flags around, it's a gang sign. It's this not like completely unwarranted. He believes that U.S. forces. It's have not been like seeing you wouldn't vote. It's like seeing enemy. fucking any, but enemy flag. Also very strongly, <laughs> the way to ultimately defeat a ruthless enemy like the Taliban is to fight them on their own terms, whether you like it or not. The Taliban resurged because the United States could not stop capturing and killing innocent civilians. The ex huh? I don't know if this is necessary. I don't know if this is necessarily like the geopolitical f understanding. This guy thing. By the way, this is from 2010, so we're fucking. We left in like 2022. <laughs> After he was falsely accused of terrorism by the corrupt head of police, Chief Mujahid, who would also be sent to Guantanamo Bay soon after. <laughs> You get fucking ratted out by a dude and then like you're in Gitmo and fucking you turn to the left one day and he's in there too like Can we bury this hatchet? <laughs> oh my god. Uh that's so stupid. Local security chief Naeem, who was also fiercely anti Taliban. But also you kinda of touched on it. The 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 thing is is like American uh America went into Afghanistan, destabilized a bunch of shit. And then we had years of fuck conservatives can't do anything. Obama basically fucking kicked the can down the line on that one because we George Bush fucked everything quite literally just by starting it because he went into two started a two front war. That's not even two fronts. It's two different countries that aren't, don't even touch each other and don't touch our country. 
So it's insanely difficult to fucking like do the logistics surrounding it in the fucking first place. But like we, neither of them have any sort of cultural crossover really other than like some people are Muslim in both countries, but not even in the same kind of way. Neither people in both countries speak different languages. They have different, crazy different histories, crazy different relations with the U S crazily different, like uh, goals and opinions of how the fucking uh, country or like the different aspects of the country should be run. It, it's so much to fucking get into American fucking like, uh, Americans doing bad things occasionally is I, I I know this sounds crazy. It is not something they care about as much as you would think. Um, because just basically like everybody commits crimes is kind of what it, what it gets to. And a lot of the American crime committing a crime during a war is not a war crime. It's just a crime. <laughs> war crimes are governed under an entire different auspice. You know what I mean? Like if a soldier just kills a civilian, that's not a war crime. That's just a crime crime. That's just murder. And you get charged with murder because the war crime aspect of it has to be like, it is intentional. Like it, 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 it's a fucking order. Like you have to be moving the, the entire army in that direction. Like one dude fucking up is not that case. And just the longer conflict goes on, the more people are going to fuck up. The Afghanistan the nation of Afghanistan and like the greater the it is a very difficult thing to describe even from what I know about it. It is hard as shit to boil down, but like corruption is basically the first and foremost thing, which you kind of couldn't even not, you can't even tell a bad story about Americans without hitting like a fucking Afghanistan corruption story. Like immediately as, as you turn around, um, the, There was no point where we were going to turn Afghanistan around. And this has nothing about the indiscriminate killing carried out by U.S. drones, which killed an obscene amount of civilians relative to enemy combatants. And beyond the death from above, U.S. forces would... But is that like in Afghanistan? Like, are those Afghani drone strikes? Or are you talking about the Pakistani ones? Because that's like who... That, I mean, obviously that's bad, but like, how does that affect Afghanistan? It's two different countries. We talk, we're talking about the Pakistan drone strikes, which are still bad. And I, I, to this day, I cannot understand what the fuck those strikes were ever to do. That shit's just horrible. Also, I haven't looked into it that much, but it just doesn't seem very military, militarily efficacious. It just seems like something like people are like, we have to do something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like your tough on crime moment is just like randomly bombing weddings. Uh, were we doing a bunch of indiscriminate drone striking in Afghanistan? It doesn't seem like it would be highly necessary. I mean, obviously there's going to be fucking flubbed air missions. That's just going to happen because it's a fucking war zone. The longer you go on with your war, all of the incidental civilian deaths are still, by the way, America's fault for being in Afghanistan and Iraq. Like, because you being there is causing the conflict and you could literally always leave at any time. Uh, technically we kind of eked out a sort of kind of W and a W, we got a little bit of a W in fucking Iraq, but like Afghanistan was an overall like waste of time and money. So like we could have just literally left at any time. You know what I mean? So like that is all their fault, but can't remember. Kill you in your own home too. Journalist Lindsay Billing dug into a zero unit squad who conducted night raids in Afghanistan on behalf of the CIA and found that across hundreds of night raids, she was able to identify at least 452 civilian deaths over a four year period. Now, 452 should be an alarming. Who was this? Okay, so this is just this is just literally the ProPublica thing. He's just taking straight from their article. These uh these animations. Oh god, this is horrible. This is this is this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Look at this piece of shit. I, people were trying to do these things for forever, but like I I just give me the fucking texts. Chapter one prologue. March 2019, Radat District. Zero units, squadrons of U.S. trained Afghan Special Forces soldiers. Okay, so they're not even Americans. U.S. SOCOM was there. CIA often joined them. As one army ranger ruefully told me after the Taliban's triumph last year, you go on night raids, make more enemies, then you gotta go on more night raids for more. the more enemies you now have to kill. What in the fuck is this? 
<laughs> my younger sister were killed in a nighttime raid in the very same district as Mazala's son long before the Americans arrived. Okay, so this isn't just this isn't like so uh, did Americans <laughs> invent this. So people just get killed in the middle of the night in Afghanistan. Where is the proof that this was the O2? It could have been anybody. It could, it could literally have just been anybody just showing up. And you could just be somebody saying, like, I'm in the O2 unit, and they're not. In the O2 unit, it's real. Maybe they did do, like, half of them. Maybe they did, like, 75% of them, 10% of them. How the fuck? There's no facts in this. It's always just like, I know a guy who said this. I know someone who talked to a friend of mine whose sister's mother's aunt said, this motherfucker's a bad hombre. <laughs> The O2 unit later said it carried out the raid in a statement announcing that the men were ISKP members. What statement? Do you have the statement? This is just, this sounds like gibberish. I'm just gonna, this is made up. As far as I'm concerned, that's fucking made up. Who conducted night raids in Afghanistan on behalf of the CIA. And found you can't have a thing that starts off with a literal animation that you made yourself and then not hit me with like a lot of facts. I went through part four of that fucking thing. <laughs> There's no fucking, there's no fucking hundreds of night raids, in it. She was able to identify at least 452 civilian deaths over a four-year period. Like I say, if you're, if you're watching this back, you got, you got fucking run. Because I don't know how the fuck you just believed that story after reading fucking the other guys. Because he had as many facts, there's as many facts in fucking Lone Survivor as there are in her story. You know what I mean? By the rules of engagement. And this consistent humiliation wore on the Afghan people, and in many cases, it turned them against the Americans. And it didn't need to be this way. Some U.S. forces did reach out hey, to the Afghans. Hey, what the fuck? GMA, wasn't this... What is this? Was this not the thing from the fucking second thought? The square cut with the, like, the, wet, the letters? I think his said, like, BPO. What the fuck is that? And treat them as a people to be invested in, rather than eliminate. Oh, good morning, America. I don't want to make it sound like the U.S. occupation was all sunshine and rainbows. Believe me, I was not a fan. But it By the way, you're using all of these illegally. You're, you're, you're stealing that content. This is not free use. <laughs> Understand, this is, none of this is free use that you're doing. If you watch back through this, it's not free use at all. You're just stealing news items. If you're trying to do reporting and other people have done the reporting and their, their images, you're using them to illustrate your own reporting on something, which is, that's what this is, you're stealing. This is all stolen. It doesn't matter if it's credited. This is, this is not fair use. <laughs> You're not talking about what's happening in here. You're using the, the illustrations to illustrate your story. You stole all of this. So just know that the crediting you did was, it didn't work. Sorry. Uh, any of these news orgs could sue you to have this taken down sometimes. That's why, while all this was happening to Mohammed Gulab, Marcus Luttrell was back in America peddling a book about how the United States needed to commit more war crimes. But why? Like, oh, I mean, it wasn't here. Don't show that. Like, this isn't when Lone Survivor came out. I know what I know what era this fucking stupid-ass studio is from. This is like, Lone Survivor looks like it came out in, like, 2013, right? It had to be before the movie, and I know this came out after, you know? Would he lie about all these details just to make himself feel better about how things shook out? Yes! Maybe, but Marcus didn't write this book at all. The Navy commissioned Patrick <laughs> Robinson to write it. And I it did so you. within weeks of Operation Red Wings coming to a close. He wrote the entirety of the book based on unrecorded interviews with Luttrell while he was away in Iraq. This is not oh, something no. you do when you are concerned with the facts on the ground. It's something you do when you only need the gist of a story to craft your narrative. This is why the book has- I fucking told you guys it was probably- I Did I not say it was probably somebody was fucking just like, they gave him to someone and that person wrote it within like 10 seconds of getting it? That's fucking hilarious. I'm not even going to double check that fact because it's probably not 100% true, but- Layering I'm errors, fucking, like the name of the operation and Shah's kill count. Because the guy who would have known that stuff was halfway across the world when the book was actually being written. Now- Robinson claims that he was chosen because the Navy felt he demonstrated a strong knowledge of the SEALs in his fiction writing. If this is true at all, it's- <laughs> Oh no. He's a fiction writing. I don't, like, I don't even believe- I don't believe the guy was picked by the Navy. Even like maybe somebody like fucking hooked him up, but that's crazy that the Department of the Navy like specifically was like, we need him to write fiction. <laughs> this story tells the reader that rules of engagement be damned. Sometimes war crimes are OK. And if it started and ended I also got to say it's still it's not a war crime. It's it's just not a war crime. It's a crime. It's just a crime. It, there's it's the distinction is very important because you can't take not only can you not 
take him to the Hague over that. You don't have to or even need to. You can charge him with murder underneath the Uniform Code of Mil- Military Justice, like the UCMJ, because that would just be murder. And like, like I've seen it happen. I've just seen it happen. We like, it happened literally in my unit. A guy murdered a person because he was a fucking mentally unfit psychopath, and he was fucking tried, and he went to prison, like just normal prison, because it's not a war crime. It's just a crime that happened during the war. Like, you have to. It has to be. You have to be directly ordered by, like, by the like, war crimes are against governments. You know what I mean? Like the government does the war crime, not the individual. Because like if the individual acts against the government's wishes in that situation, then like you know what I mean? Like how are you getting caught up? Like who who are you whose fault is it then? Because if you can act against the government's legal wishes, which are for you to not murder anybody unnecessarily, then what value does like the war crime aspect of it happen? Cause like then, then just, is it always their fault? Like no matter what you do, like if you just put on a uniform, you like that, that would create like an untenable situation where any mistake that occurs in the standard conduct of war, whether it's, you know, an ally, whether or not generally everything else went right or not is like suddenly like, okay, this entire operation is tainted because this entire operation is a fucking war crime. Like, no one guy that was like mentally unwell, did an insane and mentally unwell thing. And then we punished him for it. Like that's not a war crime. It's just, it's just a crime, but it's very important too, because this kind of comes back. It's the written house effect. Uh, I'll bring this up again and again and again. Cause I think this is the one that's actually going to hammer it home to fucking lefties hit them on the crime. They did because if you, cause eventually it has to go before a jury. Right. And unless you're willing to start doing the fascism as well, and just doing vibes based policing, uh, you have to prove that they did the thing. So like, if you're trying to say like, he was thinking about committing a war crime, he was just going to commit a crime. Like him and his, those, that unit was going to commit a crime. It's not a war crime. It would be a war crime. If the directive was to engage in that shit, like in general. Right. And that's why they say like, that doesn't even come up. Like, cause that would be the the fucking Marine was like, that's the most insane shit I've ever heard. No one would have a discussion like that because that's just conspiracy to commit murder. Like that's already established. Like that's part of the UCMJ. You don't get up to the fucking Hague that stops right there. You know what I mean? Wasn't it an ongoing war? Sorry if I'm being dumb, but why isn't it a war crime? It has to be a direct result, an intentional and direct result of the policy. Right? So, like if the if you know i'm in a, i'm in a country and i'm walking around and i purposely push over a pole right because i'm stupid and the pole falls and it breaks a family's house and kills one of them you're not allowed to attack civilian structures you're not allowed to attack unarmed civilians you know those are like things that are like illegal to do right that because I was just walking and I did that. I just negligently did all of those things, but because I did it because of my own decision and it was not part of the operating procedure, like then it's not a war crime. It's a crime. It happened during the war. Yes. But it will more than likely be adjudicated by the command. War crimes are tried all the way up at the top. It, it's a thing that whole like command structures and shit, are, are, are called to account for. You know what I mean? That, that's why when you see the people that are being tried for the war crimes, it's generals, it's president. It's like Milosevic, right? Was fucking tried for war crimes because it's his intention. Now, if they say, we want you to go out on a patrol and we want you to make sure there's no one alive in like Sodder City, whatever, right? I shouldn't say that because it's an actual real place. Um, in, in city X, like we want you to go to city X and make sure there's no one alive. Even though you don't say like, we want you to kill anyone. If you go there and then you start terminating everyone and then you come back, like that's, that's a war crime because that even just the insinuation of like, Hey, we want to make sure that that's empty. Like you start just free firing people. Like that's a war crime. It has to be a, a an act of ordering, um, a, an act of issuing orders at a, at a significant way like a significantly high level like even like you know i was like a lance corporal corporals that were right over like a team level like if your team leader's like yeah do this stuff 
even that's just it's just doesn't rise to the occasion because these are things that are handled by treaties between nations. So it has to be basically, if you think about it, at a national level, right? It has to be occurrences of such extraordinary occasion that it threatens the sovereignty of other nations as well and makes them feel uneasy about your conduct in war. The point of war is literally to go kill people. And like, you're going to do violent shit. You know, it's that it's just the case. Like, it's just miserable. You should just not do war if you can. Once you start doing it, though, it's governed under certain rules. You can feel bad about it. You can be like, this is fucking bullshit. Yeah, go vote. Like, fucking establish political fucking uh, strongholds in your neighborhoods. Build cells of leftist thought in throughout the country that fucking <laughs> that 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 push toward anti-war sentiment. But being butthurt about it on the internet is going to change shit. Um but like it has to be bigger and it has to be intentional intentionality all of those things go and if you get up to the tippity top of stuff and you don't have that motherfuckers get away with shit they get to walk away you know what i mean they don't get brought to heel and sometimes you can oversell yourself you can be like this is a war crime war crime which is going to be like pinned on them and they're like no it's just like this one guy you could have maybe asked them to just try the one guy with murder Oh, like, well, you just have this dude murdered somebody. Obviously, we don't want to call this a war crime and escalate it to the next area, but we would like to see this one guy, like, charged with murder for being, like, a literal murderer to show that you're kind of, like, handling things in your own court because that conduct is still, like, not in line with your mission, correct? And then you can probably exert more control that way. But this, like, especially, like, hyper-lib predilection, I don't know what it is specifically with, like, vibes based misunderstanding of shit just not even trying to fucking understand it any better or like looking deeper than surface stuff and just be like it's fucking war crime you know what i'm saying um it it really gets in their way of like of making like salient political points and like rising to the case because if you like the i don't have anywhere near as much experience or ability to articulate this shit as the people that are up at the tippity top of the military generals and stuff you're gonna start talking to them if you actually got political office and this is the in, this is the extent of the thought that you have about this shit, and you're trying to articulate with generals like, why were you committing war crimes in Kandahar? And he's just looking at you like, what the fuck are you talking about? And they're like, this thing like, are, are you not ashamed of the war crimes you committed? He's like, what are you? T- we weren't, we didn't have troops there. Who are you talking about that was committing a war crime? Like, what, what the fuck? And like, you you describe a thing, and he's like, well, that was six years before we were there. That was. British troops, which didn't fall underneath our command structure, and they were they were tried and like sentenced to 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 years in in the brig for for those things. They they, they were dishonorably discharged. Like, why are you talking about this like this? Like, well, I heard through a source that if you didn't, no, I don't know if you saw this report. And it's like, dude, you bring fucking grounded facts because like these people don't have all the time in the world to like hear out your inane lefty conspiracy theories. Like, have your shit fucking ready to go. Like, know what you're talking about know how to address it. Like you don't get to have your own fucking interpretation of like what the stuff is when you get to the top. You don't get to be like, well, it feels like it. You know what I mean? Cause you just don't even have the fucking, you don't have the political backing for that. It may be, I don't know. I feel like maybe it is like even that guy got told no. You know what I mean? Ended there. I wouldn't waste so much time talking about this, but this is not a fringe opinion held by a ghostwriter gone rogue. Some American soldiers in Iraq would tell you the same thing with one telling Seymour Hirsch, we're going to have to play their game. Guerrilla versus guerrilla. Terrorism versus terrorism. We've got to scare the Iraqis into submission. This is an opinion. That's a shitty... That's a shitty little bitch baby quote to pull out. Who said that and why? And what was the context? And like literally... like that, That's such a shit quote. I, I am actually... That's, that was, that was, that's bad. That was bad on your part. And held all the way up to the highest reaches of American power. Jimmy Carter. The guy that's always trotted out as... How the fuck are we talking? Are we talking? What can we? Don't show me anything that's made in 2024 and talking about like the current issues facing the military, and then show me a picture of Jimmy Carter that is in this level of fucking like disarray. W- when the fuck was this shit filmed? It's the most moral post World War II president. And I cannot stress enough that this is not just a case of Robinson agreeing with those guys. But like, who gives a fuck? Like, unironically, like at a certain point, can we? Can we? We need to establish <laughs> at the moment 
when none of none of the people, none of the people pretty much that were in the military when Jimmy Carter gave that statement are still in it or maybe even alive. Can we move to the next thing? Because I'm like, at what point do we, <laughs> how, how are we connecting uh, mid 2000, 2010, 2010, 2013? How are we connecting that to the My Lai massacre as an act of like, or as a, as a general, like as a, as a disposition thing? Like, I, I don't even, first off, I don't understand that actual connection other than like, I guess a laissez-faire attitude towards war crimes. The My Lai Massacre was insane and just, that's it, pretty much. It's just that one word is is fine. It was a nightmarish, scorched earth war. It was actually a war crime. It was actually a war crime. When you say war crime, My Lai Massacre, that's what people mean, right? It's a war crime. Let me, let me rephrase this. Let me phrase this so you guys can understand this better. There are crimes that are crimes everywhere that you can commit during war. And it's still a crime that you committed during war. War crimes can only be committed during war. Let me ref- let's let's think of it that way. From now on, when you think of it, war crimes can only be committed with an act of war. It needs war level fucking shit happening, which is what my life was hundreds of people killed, raped, murdered, enslaved, tortured, cut to pieces, set on fire. Um, by people for like what is it days months something like that it was an insane ongoing meat grinder of every single person that was involved in that deserves to be put into a fucking box for a very long time or at least a short time uh, regardless of how like fucking just following orders you were that was that shit sucks man you probably need to get put in a box just for your own fucking health even if you tried to stop everybody and failed like just sitting there man Give yourself a couple of days. Just we'll bring you food. Think about anything else. You know what I mean? Like it's so just obvious and on its face. I mean, we we start talking about like fucking like Sarajevo and shit. You know what I mean? Um, in Serbia, the, you know, pits dug, people shot in the back of the head. Hundreds in fucking pits covered in gasoline, set on fire. The uh, the Nazis like literal fucking camps with people burning in them. Uh, gassing people. Saddam Hussein gassing, literally just raw off off rip, gassing civilian populations with fucking um, ICBMs. And he just did that, by the way. That's not like that's not like you know uh, weapons of mass destruction. I almost got it back. There's old W. Bush. I can't quite get it though. Uh, he just he was just doing war crime, war crimes. Like that's just <laughs> that's just it. Americans have created committed a lot of crimes during war. Because that does happen, and covering it up, I think, is probably arguable that it's extremely deleterious to the overall mission goals of anything that you do. But like a war crime is some serious shit, and and I think this desire—it's it's the America bad first kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Because like you can say the same shit about the fucking ad, everything that you're accusing the Americans of, of being like responsible for you're taking it off the shoulders of other people that do the exact same stuff that are our enemies all the time, which you, you shouldn't like it's, it's bad when all of us do it kind of thing, but like hyper focusing on the Americans doing it, I guess just because we are fucking stacking the dubs in most of the fights and being like, you guys are responsible for this shit a hundred percent of the time. You know what I mean? Like you guys are the only ones that are doing any of this awful stuff. Like, but bro, we left, and they're still just like skinning people and setting them on fire and shit. Like they, they just they just do crazy stuff. Like <laughs> are you gonna talk about that at all? Like like what is what is your intention here? Like what do you actually want to accomplish with this? Are you just trying to get people like whipped up? You're not doing that much fucking research. A lot of this seems kind of second hand. This book is fucking ten years old. That movie was fucking hilariously shit. I don't think anybody fucking remembers it. So it's kind of like even this dude at his at the beginning of it's like, I'm bringing this up kind of apropos of nothing because I'm upset about war crimes, but like also most importantly, none happened in the book, which I, I feel like we're kind of glossing over because of how much we're talking about American war crimes in this is that no war crimes happened in the book or in real life either in real life. They like let the guys go and then got ambushed and fucking the one dude survived by getting blown up a bit and I guess crawled away and 
the dude dragged him out and was like, all right, I'll send you back. So like just no war crimes happened in the book. Even the book, which was like pro war crimes, I guess, is like um saying like well, I didn't do the war crime, but like I kinda wish I did vibe. But then also it wasn't even the guy that it happened to. So like what what is the point of this actually? Like when we really get down to it, did you just want to talk about like you could have just talked about American war crimes in a different way. I wanted to watch Mark Wahlberg fall down that goddamn that goddamn hill. Out of happenstance. The military industrial complex to convince you that the reason the US is not winning wars is because they need to kill more innocent people. Who did it convince though? That, that's this is the thing. Like you're buddy, you're the only person talking about this book. We could you could have gone with American Sniper. I guess because you wanted to have a, cha- a, a like a channel that has like that Nazi vibe, but it's like not, you know, like burn this book. It's a little fash. I'm not gonna lie. This this is coming off a little fucking America bad. Is there going to be a pro Russia book coming up here soon? Or is our next thing going to be uh, what is it called? Um, Red Winter or whatever the fuck what was that? I hate keeps me warm. You can have one of those. Uh. I didn't get a chance to talk about the way that the trial. Can I just say the Marines are based every time? Maybe maybe, uh, maybe the military does suck, and just the U.S. Marines are fucking based as shit. Like I like I, we sent the one guy I know to jail. Every time they're brought up in this entire thing, it's just like, well, the Marines are really cool. They sat down, had tea with the guy, uh, but then the fucking dickhead ass fucking seals black bag the dude. <laughs> he come over to the Marine Corps base, we're like, hey, do you want crayons? Can I make you tea? Continues to talk about Gulab as though they have a brotherly relationship to this day, despite Gulab publicly calling him out for lying and abandoning him all the way back in 2016. I didn't get to talk about the fact that Joe Rogan had the trial on his podcast in March of 2021. Ooh despite all these lies being readily accessible for years. And I decided not to delve into this stuff because- I feel like that's not well, much of a number news. One, I'm not h guy. I don't have the clout for that. But also because these more minor personal grievances I have with everyone involved here is nothing compared to the American exceptionalism that this book represents and how many innocent people these ideas have killed across the globe. And make no mistake, I'll keep watching this garbage. And you can too. But for the love of God, don't ever let the people that direct movies like Hancock and Battleship inform your politics. I'm a little disappointed in this one overall. Um, it started off strong when we were still talking about the movie. The back end of this is is just dog shit. Um, I, I I mean I guess like yeah the book is pro war crimes. Not even it's not even really pro war crimes. It's pro it's pro murder. I mean it's just not a war crime war crime. Um, and it's not even a thing that would happen. And it's a thing that not a thing that did happen. I mean. I guess maybe if you articulate it as the guy's trying to be like, it's pr- like you should shoot civilians at the drop of a hat more often. I guess technically, yeah. If you did change the entire ROEs to you can free fire on civilians for whenever you feel like it. Sure. But um, that's never going to happen because it, that would be insane. Um, th- that would go counter to like all of the like education and discipline put into the entire like people I don't like. I just personally don't like I just personally don't like them. I don't like their fucking leadership stuff. Even they wouldn't agree that you should give um, everybody on the ground like free fire rights because you would just start indiscriminately killing, which is a bad thing. And it doesn't suit any mission. It would make everything more difficult. You would run out of ammo because you're shoot- like you can just get callous with it. You would just run out of ammunition because you're shooting normal people too much. That happened to the Nazis, I believe. Um, during one of their fucking thing, it wasn't maybe maybe it was barbarous. I can't remember, but they were literally shooting. They were executing prisoners so much that they had to find different means because they were running out of fucking ammunition, which they needed to actually fight in other places. Like, and it, it's just stupid. It's stupid in every like from the most evil direction to the most like okay, I'm going to be a moral purist about stuff, which I, I just don't find is convincing to the people that need to be convinced in these kind of things. So like, whatever, but like also th- this, this entire video just seemed like we were resurrecting, you know, when they, that thing where they pulled that pro- Pope out of his grave and dressed him up like he was still alive and then put him on trial. That's just what this is. Like the book is 11 years old now, if not more, I guess the movie's 11 years old. Nobody fucking remembers it. It wasn't good. Mark Wahlberg's career doesn't seem to be an ongoing thing where it's like, oh shit, Mark Wahlberg's about to run for president and like lone survivor is going to get him the nom. This just feels like uh, 
pointless as fuck muckraking for for no real reason. Uh, there's so many things to make fun of that movie for. I could, like I did. I wanted to talk. I thought people were like, why is this getting so grim? I don't know. That movie is a fucking romp. It is the stupidest film ever. It's so fucking dumb. It's badly made. <laughs> it makes no fucking sense because it's built built on a lie. Half of the fucking like uh, cool like fighty scenes, it's like oh fucking something happened and no one knows, and now like a guy's getting killed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's uh, it's it's. It, it, I don't get it. I don't. I don't understand the point of this, other than I guess ongoing America bad sentiment right now. Which hey, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Good luck on your views, by the way. Six K. Um, I would watch out stealing that much. Stealing as much. You stole f- so much fucking B footage. Like and like subscribe. And like, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe.